One of the unique features of an alkene, a molecule with a carbon-carbon double bond, is that the double bond is not free to rotate. That carbon-carbon double bond can't twist. Because that carbon-carbon double bond is locked in this particular position, the atoms that are attached to the carbon atoms of the double bond are also locked in their relative positions. So this means that the chlorine and the hydrogen are always opposite from each other in this molecule. The hydrogen atom and the chlorine over here are not able to trade places. They're always going to be stuck in this position. This creates a, a type of relationship called isomers, cis and trans isomers specifically. If we compare these two molecules here, they're both alkenes. They are both two carbons of the alkene. The carbon on the left hand side has a chlorine and a hydrogen for both of the molecules. The carbon on the right hand side also has a chlorine and a hydrogen for both of the molecules. So these two molecules have the same molecular formula and they also have the atoms connected in the same order. The, the difference between these two molecules lies solely in the position of the hydrogen and the chlorine on the right hand carbon atom. In the molecule on the left, the chlorine is, is down. In the molecule on the right, the chlorine is up. The relationship between these two molecules here is described as a cis-trans isomer relationship. Not the same as a constitutional isomer, it's a totally different type of isomer. Cis-trans isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula, they also have the same connection of atoms, so they're connected in the same order, connected in the same places, they are only different in terms of the spatial arrangement of atoms that are attached to one of the carbons of the alkene. In order to distinguish these two uh, molecules from each other, we use either the cis prefix or the trans prefix to describe the relative shape. When using the cis and trans prefix, we have to find something on the left-hand carbon and something on the right-hand carbon that is identical, both of those carbon atoms. So for example, a chlorine on the left-hand carbon that's identical to the chlorine on the right, or a chlorine on the left that's identical to the chlorine on the right. In this situation, we could have just as easily chosen the hydrogen atoms to compare. That would have worked as well. We just need to find something that's on the left that's also exactly the same on the right. And then what we do, once we've identified that thing that we're going to compare, we look at the relative position of those two groups. In order to do this, we're going to kind of draw an imaginary line that goes right through the carbon-carbon double bond. So we're dividing the molecule like this, parallel right through the carbon-carbon double bond. And then we look at the relative position of these two groups that we highlighted. If they are on opposite sides of the line, like they are in the first example, we refer to this relationship or this type of, of isomer as trans, the prefix that means different. If they're on the same side of the line, then we refer to the isomer as, or the molecule as cis. That's a prefix that means the same because they're on the same side. These cis and trans prefixes just come at the very beginning of the molecule's name. So if we wanted to give these molecules their whole entire name, we would say, well, it's this, we can see that we have a two carbon alkene. There are chlorines on carbon number one and number two. So this is a one, two dichloro two carbon with a carbon-carbon double bond, so it's a trans 1,2-dichloroethene. The other molecule has pretty much the exact same name, cis 1,2-dichloroethene. Here is a couple more examples for us to look at. So again, if we want to identify, um, are these the cis or trans isomers, we're gonna draw an imaginary line that goes right through the double bond. We're gonna look for something that's on the left-hand carbon that is also on the right-hand carbon. It has to be exactly one thing. So this time, let's use the hydrogens. We have a hydrogen atom on the left side and a hydrogen atom on the right side one hydrogen on the left and one hydrogen on the right. And then what we're gonna do is compare the relative position of these highlighted groups. So um, in our first one, the highlighted groups are on opposite sides. So this is the trans isomer. And in our second one, the highlighted groups are on the same side. So this is the cis isomer. We also could have used the CH3 groups in these molecules to compare, that would have worked as well. 
Not all molecules are able to be classified as cis and trans, and this is an example of a molecule that we can't classify as cis or trans. So if we look at this molecule, we have to find something on the left-hand carbon, one thing that's also present on the right-hand carbon, just one thing, and we don't have that. In this molecule, we have a total of three hydrogen atoms, and we cannot compare them. If we have more than two identical things, in this case, we have one, two, three, we can't make a comparison. We could say that these two hydrogens are on the same side, so they're cis, but these two hydrogens are on opposite sides, so they're trans. So how would we even go about making some sort of, of decision about whether to call it cis or trans? In order to be able to classify something as cis or trans, you have to have exactly and only one thing on the left carbon that's identical to exactly and only one thing on the right-hand carbon. So this molecule is just not classified as cis or trans. It doesn't have any kind of prefix. It doesn't need any kind of prefix. Not classified as cis or trans. And you'll find that there are quite a few alkenes that don't get classified as cis or trans.